G'day, I'm Ian Swain, the owner of Swain Destinations, a company that specializes in travel to Australia, New Zealand, Africa, Asia, and India. And today, welcome to another episode of G'day with Ian Swain. Today, we're heading back to Victoria Falls on the Zimbabwean side for another view of these spectacular falls. The luxury safari lodge Matetsi Victoria Falls is located on the banks of the Zambezi River, upriver from the spectacular falls. And it is a realization of a dream that my guest today and her family have had since she was a child playing in the mud on the banks of the same river. Zimbabwean born and bred, Sarah Gardner is incredibly passionate about her home country, the caliber of the Zimbabwean people and the richness of the land and wildlife. Sarah is the founder and owner and has made it her mission to showcase everything exceptional from her part of the world. And in doing so makes a strong positive impact for the region and surrounding communities. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Ian. Thanks for having me on today. Great to be with you. You know, Sarah, I see a lot of similarities with your vision and mine. Both family owned, operated about 30 years in the making. Why is it important to you and what benefits have you seen of being a family owned oper and operated company? I feel, I feel that as a, as a family owned operation, we have a very strong culture and we stick very true to that. Um, and that's based on honesty and integrity. We have a strong value for our people, the individuals in our team. Um, they're not just staff members, but it's almost like an extension of our family. Um, and we share our values together with them and it helps us realize our, our vision overall. And your vision is very strong, which, which I loved reading and I'll quote it to position ourselves as the number one lodge in Africa, and in doing so, show the world how exceptional our country and our people are. To be the example of how a single tourism operator can benefit, not just the local area or, or economy, but a whole country by changing global perspectives and understanding. Has your team embraced this and what were they involved in creating it with you? So it's, it's something that was part of our family's vision before we established Matetsi. And I think a lot of it is to do with when many people hear about Zimbabwe, they, they think of very negative things. You know, we have had political, social and economic difficulties in this country, but it's a beautiful country with amazing people. That's for me, the top of the list, um, beautiful landscapes and amazing wildlife. And our team on property feel that they're all very proud. Our team on property is 100% Zimbabwean. And we are all very proudly Zimbabwean. We're very proud of how amazing our, the individuals in our team are and how beautiful our country is. And so for us, when guests are coming to visit us, it's about showcasing this part of the world. And what we want at the end of the day is, actually, even if our guests forget the name of the property, if they go away saying that they had the most incredible time in Zimbabwe, then we've really achieved our goal. They go away saying, you've got to visit Zimbabwe, you've got to go to that country. The people there are incredible, amazing wildlife. You would just, you would never expect it. Um, and yes, yeah, so the team are, are very much behind it and we are very proud to be 100% Zimbabwean. No, it's great, great to have that and great to have that passion and the feeling of the whole team being Zimbabwean behind you. I know the lodge was open before you got involved, before your family purchased it, uh, but it's located in the Matetsi Prime sorry, Matetsi Private Game Reserve, which is over 136,000 acres. When you first purchased it, was it hard to establish or reestablish the business model that was there before? Because I know you've done a lot of renovations and changes to the property itself. Yes, so um, the old lodge that was on site um, where the new lodge is, it uh, had been closed for a couple of years actually. Um, and there was a huge amount of work that needed to be done and not just on the lodge site, but also on the private game reserve itself. So when we came on property, all sorts of things. So there was a team who'd stayed here and um, they weren't being paid by anyone, but they were just trying to look after the rooms as best they could. Um, but all the roads were very dilapidated. Um, so there was a huge conservation project, which maybe we'll talk about a little bit later on redoing the roads and reestablishing road networks, for example. And then the lodge itself, it was initially built in the 90s. And the site is all along the beautiful Zambezi River. And at the time it had been done in the sort of typical thatch style. And 
our vision, as you've just said, is you know to be the number one lodge in Africa. And we realized we needed to to lift it in every way. Um, so that was also from an architectural design perspective. So we brought in a young Zimbabwean architectural designer, um, and she's yeah basically completely redone the lodge. You know, we have guests who visited us in the late 90s or early 2000s, and they come back and they can't even almost can't even see what the original parts were. Yeah, I remember seeing the, the lodge before it was yours and, and um, I have not had the benefit of seeing it since you've done the renovations, but I would look forward to coming down to do that. Um, but it looks very much different and it looks much better and, and I think you'll become the number one lodge in, in Africa, which is your goal. The access um, is through the, mainly through the Victoria Falls airports. How far is the drive or heli flight from the airports to the lodge? So if you do the drive, it's just under an hour. Um, and that can be done in an air conditioned transfer vehicle all the way from the airport through to the lodge. And then if you do the heli flight, it's either 15 minutes direct or otherwise you could go over the flight of the angels, which we highly recommend. It's spectacular. So pick up at the airport, flight up over the falls and then down the Zambezi river. And that's about 35 minutes. And then you'll land right here on property on our helipad. Um, so you're about two minutes from the lodge. It's spectacular. The Flight of the Angels is a spectacular thing and we encourage all our guests to take advantage of that when they're traveling in and around Victoria Falls. Um, also, you've got a close proximity to Kasani, which makes it easy to travel to Botswana either pre or before uh, or after Matetsi Lodge, which is, is quite easy. It's not a very long drive to Kasani. No, um, including the border crossing, it only takes about an hour and a half. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I feel like Matetsi Victoria Falls works perfectly at the beginning of an itinerary or at the end of an itinerary, you know, so you could come into land and, and sort of your first Africa stop could be here and then you can road transfer across to Botswana if that's for your, your onward destination um, or vice versa as well if you were doing Botswana first and then coming through through to Matetsi. Very straightforward. It's a great combination because you're getting the, the whole um, gambit of different safaris and the Zambezi River at the same time. Let's just talk about the lodge for a moment of how many rooms and suites, the, the views they all get, the decor, and what, what does Matetsi offer that say others don't? So we have 16 suites and two family suites. Um, so, and then one four bedroom private villa. Um, so we, I think, are possibly the only property in the area with a four-bedroom private villa. Um, the two-bedroom family suite, the main room is exactly the same as our suites, and then you have an interleading corridor through to a children's room. Um, all our suites are very spacious. They're all air-conditioned, beautiful root, um, views over the Zambezi. I can maybe, um, for those that are watching on video, I can switch around and show you a little glimpse of the river, which is just behind me here. Um, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> And then um, I think the really key difference is the privacy and the tranquility. So we are just 40 minutes from Vic Falls town. So we're away from the hustle and bustle. Um, so we're ideal for guests that are really looking to be in a very tranquil setting. Um, the private game reserve, our guests here have exclusive traversing rights on, the, on this property. So it's 136,000 acres of basically exclusive safari space. And then there's also nine miles of river frontage. Um, so in front of the suites, we don't do any boating activities. Um, so the guests, when they look out onto the river, it's always peaceful and tranquil. And then where we do our boating is just up river from here. Um, and there's no other boats on the river in that section. So I think that's one of our key differences um, to be able to offer that really tranquil experience on the river itself. I know the four bedroom villa looks absolutely stunning and I know it's perfect for our, our multi-gen families or our large families that travel together to have the children along with them or the, or the grandparents with them. I'm sure that's very popular. Is it booked out quite often? It, it is, yeah, it is very popular and it's getting more and more booked out. Um, I think as, as word gets out that there is a four bedroom private villa here, um, it's, you know, and the beautiful thing with the villa is that the guests have a dedicated team. So for guests in the suites and the family suites, they do have a personal butler um, and they um, are looked after in our main guest areas. And then in the villa, it's in villa dining. So the guests have a dedicated private chef there. They also have a private butler and private housekeeper as well. Um, and the villa has its own pool area and indoor and outdoor seating and dining areas. So it's a really gorgeous space for small groups or families to relax and enjoy. 
What's the maximum number of people you can have in the four bedroom villa? So we, we would say eight in the villa. And then because the villa is within the line of the suites, you can actually book an additional suite if you wanted um, to have 10 guests in a group. Um, and they could still come through to the main guest, or to the villa to have all their dining experiences. I know that um, you offer both land and water experiences and you've just started to talk about the water activities that you do. Let's discuss a typical day at Matetsi and what's the average time that people stay there? So how, how do they get all the activities in, in the time they're there? So for many people, the Victoria Falls area is a two night stop. Um, and if guests are with us for two nights, we will ensure that they have the most incredible experience because I know often, especially American guests, they might be short on time and two nights is all they can do. But we do really recommend a minimum of three and an ideal of four because the property is somewhere you can relax and enjoy. So those land and water based activities that I'll also talk about. And then I actually haven't even mentioned the food experiences. We have the most incredible kitchen team here. Um, and many okay. of our guests... Yeah. I was going to get to that because that's important to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just to go through, like run through the activities. So if let's say guests are with us for, um, let's say they're with us for three, three nights. So yeah, guests would arrive on their, on their first day, hopefully in time to have um, a, a late lunch with us and relax in their suite before an evening drive. And because we're on a private property, guests can do sundowners out in the bush and then they can night drive um, back to the lodge in time for dinner. And then the morning, morning game drive followed by breakfast. And then we highly recommend, as we were just talking about, the Flight of the Angels helicopter experience. So guests could go into town mid-morning, go for a helicopter flight over the falls, go and maybe go in with a packed lunch, and then have a guided tour of the falls. And then we actually include high tea at the Victoria Falls Hotel as one of our experiences because we feel like the hotel is an iconic part of the Vic Falls. So, and then after that, we say retreat back on property, and that would be in time to do a sundowner cruise on the river. Um, so beautiful Zambezi River sunset, sunset cruise. And then of course, another gorgeous dinner after that. And then the next day would be a day for guests to maybe slow down, possibly go on another morning drive, possibly actually have a lion, which I know is not typical on a safari holiday. Um, and then mid morning could be a time to go for a walking safari or canoe safari, or perhaps some fishing on the river. And then a lovely lunch, maybe in our wine cellar space. That's a really great space for a, a different location for lunch. And then afternoon, another beautiful evening drive. And then another dinner, perhaps a bush dinner. So what are the, animals that you see on the game drive? So on property here, we have all the wildlife that occur naturally, except for rhino. So that species was removed from the area in the late 90s. Uh, we would love to reintroduce them, and I hope that that will be part of our conservation story in the future. And what guests will typically see is lots of elephants, um, big, big herds of buffalo, and then you've got your, as guides say, if you want to find the lion, follow the buffalo. They're the favorite prey in this part of the world. We do have leopard on property. They are quite elusive. Um, they are not falling out of trees like in the Sabi sands. I do like to make that disclaimer. But then all sorts. We have lots of giraffe, zebra, sable, impala. As you can hear, the bird life is fantastic. Um, and then also in the south, so that because the property is so huge, actually to put it in context, 136,000 acres, it's 85% of the size of Sabi Sands. So Amazing. it's Amazing. just our guess. Yeah. And then, and you have a whole diverse range of ecosystems. So up on the river, we've got lots of big trees. Obviously you've got the river line and your water birds. And then we've got beautiful, we call them flay systems. Um, so it's almost like, maybe like a marsh type system. Um, and those heavily, heavy water areas draw in the game and you've got beautiful open plains. So amazing for your plains game. And then we get the sable and the eland and the roan in the south. Before we get on to the food experience, which is very important, I know you have a kids program and, and being a family man myself, uh, we've got kids and we've taken our kids on safari. Can you explain a bit more about your kids program and what they get to do? Yeah, so our kids program is called the Matetsi Cubs. And we do try and keep it relatively flexible. So, you know, there's usually you know, something to cater for children of, of all ages. Um, but just to give you an example of some of the activities. So one of the favorites is 
simply going for a nature walk in the lodge. I mean, you can you can hear the bird life here, um, so it's wonderful. So the children will go with one of our guides or one of our trackers in a very safe space along by the lodge, along the roads here, um, paths here, and then they'll be looking out for different trees and different birds and any um, signs of wildlife that they might see um, and learning to identify and also appreciate nature as well. And that's what it's really about for our guides is nurturing that appreciation for nature. Um, another one of the activities is cooking with our chefs, um, which is really fun. And again, we try to, you know, make it um, flexible depending on what the, what the kids would prefer to do. So one of my favorite instances was actually when um, the kids woke up quite early and they came through with their butler and they prepared breakfast for their parents and then they did breakfast in bed for their parents, um, which I thought was really special. And they did the whole plate and, and trade up which is really cool. So there's a variety of, of different things. That's great. What sort of age group do you think the minimum age of, for a child to go on safari would be? So we do welcome children of all ages and we feel it's at the discretion of the parents to decide when they would like to travel with their children for a safari. Um, I think a lot of people say six or seven is, is the right sort of age. Um, for, for us, um, we do no children under six on a on a shared game drive vehicle so if, if parents are traveling with a very little one um, they can either have the option of booking a private game drive vehicle or perhaps they would like to go out and one of our team could look after the little one um, but i think um, it's amazing how well behaved actually children become when they're out on safari i think they're so in awe of of nature and stimulated by all this you know the sights and the sounds and the colors and the excitement um, that you know, they, they generally have a, a really a special time. We love hosting children on property. And also our, because our guests are looked after by a personal butler, you know, when, when it's, even when it's adults, you get to form a very good relationship with your butler and your butler starts to understand what your likes and dislikes are. And it's the same when they're with, with children as well, you know, starting to understand. We, um, we're actually very fortunate um, to have guests in house at the moment. And we had a family with us recently and the team did a romantic bubble bath for the parents after they'd gone for the tour of the falls in town. And so when they all came back, the butler brought the children through to the main area and did games. We, ha we always have games around, so things like Scrabble and Monopoly and all that sort of thing. Um, and they did games in the main area and then the parents got to go and enjoy their bubble bath. That's wonderful. I have to um, remember to do, order that one when I get down there. Let's talk about the food experience because the um, African lodges do that so well and I'm sure Matetsi is no different. Uh, can you explain the dining experience of Matetsi that you offer? Yes, so I think what I actually didn't mention in our, although we have 16 suites, we have two main guest areas, one on the eastern side and one on the western side. Um, so it never feels too busy when guests are, are around. Um, and each of the main guest areas has indoor and outdoor dining spaces. And then um, from a dining experiences perspective, we also do bush breakfasts and bush dinners. And sometimes we do lunch on the boat. We also do private in-room dining and we love using our wine cellar space as a dining experience as well. So that's great for, for lunches and dinners as well. And I think what really makes it is, is the team. Um, we have an exceptional executive chef. His name is Shane Ellis. He was previously at Singita Pamushana. And then our head chef is a guy called Artwell Muchenji, who was previously at the Cape Grace. And the two of them together are just the most incredible team. And they've trained up, our kitchen team is about 30 strong. So it's quite sizable. And we take our food very, very seriously. Um, really doing everything from scratch. So even your tomato sauce that comes, you know, if you get your fish and chips, for example, a Zambezi bream with, with chips, your, your ketchup will also be homemade as well. Um, home homemade cured beetroot cured salmon was something that Artwell was working on recently as well it just yeah um, many of our guests actually say our food is deserving of a michelin star which i think is is great praise it would be great to get some barbie into the michelin program but it might take a bit longer it would be fantastic <laughs> if you have anyone that you can put me in touch with let me know we'll get them out here i um we are so proud of our chefs and especially you know shane i'm not sure if you can hear the elephants um, I can, Shane I can hear and, them coming. Yeah, they're coming, they're coming. Uh, you know, Shane and Artwell have had more exposure than many of the other guys in our team. But what I really love is that they've brought their skills and expertise into the kitchen and they're upskilling their team as well. Um, so, for example, 
there's a guy called Sox who's actually been working on this property since the late 90s. He just started as a as the cleaner um, in the back of house and he slowly worked his way up to I think a breakfast chef level when he joined us and he is now um, a chef de partie. He stepped up. Um, his son joined the team just as a scholar and he stepped up to breakfast chef and slowly um, the team are growing and developing and it's just really fantastic to see. Um, it's world, like the fact that our team are 100% Zimbabwean and producing world-class food makes me very, very proud. I love the fact that you make everything home from scratch. That just makes it so much better and so much fresher. And the produce up there that you have access to oh. is exceptional. Yeah, right. we're so fortunate. The, um, and we have a, a small garden here on property. And then we also have a small garden in Vic Falls Town. And there's also outgrowers in some of the community projects that we source from as well. Yeah. Speaking of the communities, I know that you're involved in conservation and the communities around you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that and why is it so important to you and to the, to the communities itself? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think every, you know, the, the two very much go hand in hand. Um, so from a community perspective, um, we work with a, an amazing organization called the Green Line Africa Trust and they have a variety of projects. Um, so they really go into the communities and try and look out for what the communities need, talking to the chief and the headman in the villages to understand um, the needs and how we can support them. So I mentioned briefly the Outgrowers program. So that's a really fantastic one. Um, the Green Line Africa Trust produce, um, supply the seeds um, and the, they are actually, generally they're old ladies or, or older gentlemen um, who may not find work elsewhere, but they're able to grow the most incredible veggies in, in the gardens. They also, they support, so traditionally in the villages, um, there aren't so much formal orphanages, but grandmothers will take in orphaned and vulnerable children and they will look after them. And so what Green Lion is doing is they support those grandmothers, they're called gogos, and they support them with, with um, hampers every month just to help them get by every month and look after those children and it creates support um, and also yeah it takes a burden off the community as well and I think if the community is doing well they're not they're not looking at the wildlife spaces as a resource necessarily so when the community does well wildlife will also do well I think that's something that's been seen you know across across Africa uh, and then here on property from a conservation perspective there's a huge amount of work to be done um, our team are doing regular, so there is um, a threat of poaching and snaring, which is sort of wire traps that are placed to try and catch wildlife. So our team do regular snare collections um, or snare sweeps, as we call them, along the riverbank. And we also have islands in the Zambezi across from us. So it's just and a huge part of it is maintaining a positive human presence across the property. So doing patrols day and night. And I think what guests don't realize is even going on a game drive, that is a positive human presence. And, and it actually helps, you know, just to have that movement through the property will deter any sort of poaching activity. Well, I was concerned and I've asked other um, guests on this show before who have African lodges about the fact that with less humans going through the properties because of the lockdown, and did it affect the animals, but they all basically came back and continued to, to do game drives in the morning and afternoon so that the animals got used to it. And also, as you just said, uh, acts as a barrier to the poachings, the poachings that go on. Um, during the lockdown, we've had we've heard many heartwarming stories of, of how local communities or how lodge owners or our lodge team members have banded together to help everybody out. Do you have any stories you can share about the Matetsi community? I think for me, the most important thing was that we were able to keep our team together. So that for us was number one and we feel very grateful for that. Um, so our team, our team have all held their jobs throughout this, this time. Um, and for us, that's, you know, we are a family, a family operation. So it's basically, you know, we've been able to keep the family together, which is key. And in turn, our team have been able to then look after their families and their communities. And then more than that, I, I mentioned the Green Line Africa Trust um, and how they interact and they're always working with the community. But what they've done is focus a lot of efforts on hygiene and, and health as well. 
So they've also gone into distributing soaps and making sure that there's an understanding of what, you know, what coronavirus is and what this means and how we can, uh, how we can avoid it um, or how we can at least best prevent and protect ourselves. And I think that getting, getting to the grassroots level of, you know, maybe individuals who are not seeing kind of everything that we on mainstream media, perhaps, um, but getting out there and making sure people understand that there is this issue and we do need to protect ourselves against it. That's wonderful. Um, I've read different parts of your website and I've heard from different people who have stayed with you a term metetsi magic. So perhaps I'm not sure if you can explain what metetsi magic means or what it is or is it a thing, um, but I'd love you to sort of try to. Yeah, I think... I think often, often it's, it's something that we say, it can't really be understood until it's been experienced. It's, it's a, whole, a whole cocktail of, of different things that come into it. It's the, the passion that, that you can feel when you meet our team and how proud they are to be Zimbabwean and how excited they are to have our guests come through and how you know, you, you're in this beautiful setting with this amazing river and this beautiful landscapes and the incredible wildlife. And you have these moments that you just, they are just magical. Um, and you combine that all together with what I feel is the most authentic hospitality in the world that comes through from our team. And, and that's Matetsi magic. I can't wait to experience the Matetsi magic. But before we go, I just have to ask you, since you're from Zimbabwe and have been there all your life, I'm sure you swam in Devil's Pool several times. Have you have you done that? And and how did you, did you do it more than once? I know I did it with my daughter when I was down there last time, and we had a great time. I had to stop her from floating over the edge. But um, have you done it and did you enjoy it? I have. I I went in the Devil's Pool in twenty four December twenty fourteen, and. It was a very cool experience. Uh, I think um, if, if people are keen on that sort of adrenaline rush, um, then it's definitely worth ticking the box. For me personally, it's not something I feel like I need to go and do regularly. Um, I have only done it the once. I've got the photo. Um, I don't even really like the photo. But I think to say, you know, to have had that experience and to be on that side of the falls. Um, unlike walking, you know, to go for a walking tour of the falls, I try and do that once a month you know, with the different water levels and the different light and it feels different and somehow amazing every single time. Um, you know, a game drives, I would happily go on a game drive, you know, multiple times a week, even though it's, you know, just on my, my back doorstep. A beautiful boat cruise on the river for me is something I can do again and again. Devil's pool, check the box. Yeah, been there, done that. Well, been there, done that. So I really appreciated chatting with you today. It's been wonderful to catch up with you again and, and learn more about Matetsi and particularly the Matetsi magic and the conservation and the, the teamwork that you're doing down there. It's just wonderful and inspiring. It'll be inspiring for all our listeners today. So thanks very much. Keep up the good work. And I can't wait to see you down there um, on the riverbank for a, uh, we'll have a sundowner together. I would love that, Ian. I was going to say, I have one question for you, and that's when are you next coming to, to visit us? Well, now that the Bar border... is opening for, for international flights from the 1st of October. I know. You may see me later this year because I, I'm itchy to go down. I mean, I travel, I used to travel, you know, every week, basically, um, religiously, just to different parts of the world. And I haven't had been able to travel since, uh, since February, actually. So I'm anxious to go there. So I'm glad that Zimbabwe is open, and maybe you might see me sooner than you think. That would be amazing. Look forward to a sundowner on the Zambezi River. Okay, then. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Thanks, Ian. Bye.